Hi everyone, my name is RK, I'm an instructor at BitGuide and this is our first course about custody methods for Bitcoin. I have posted right below our details, the website, the email address and our Twitter handle. So if you're taking this course and you would like to know more about what we do and would like to get in touch with us, please feel free to visit our website or reach out to us over email. So basically this course is supposed to be for beginners. So if you're just an advanced uh, user, Bitcoin user, you can actually skip this course and fast forward to Tech02. By the time you are taking this course, it will be released very, very soon. So in this course, we are going to have uh, two chapters. In the first chapter, I will discuss very basic things about custodial wallets or custodial exchanges, basically places you can buy Bitcoin and hold your Bitcoin other than private uh, wallets, okay? So with third parties. And within the four lessons I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna discuss very briefly what a custodian wallet actually is, the benefits, and yes, there are benefits to custodian wallets and trade-offs of a custodian wallet, um, choosing a custodian or an exchange, and uh, last but not least, the reduction of third-party risks. So to answer the question what a custodian wallet is, uh, we can actually use the traditional fiat world to make this understand much, much easier. If you, for example, have a bank account and the bank is holding your currency, whatever currency you're, you're using, whether it's euros or dollars, doesn't matter. Um, basically, that bank is your custodian, which in essence means that you actually don't possess the money that they hold for you. You are a beneficiary of that uh, currency, but, uh, or in other words, they owe you that money. You are on their liability side of the balance sheet. And uh, the bank can basically not grant you access to those. Uh, currencies. So if you go to your bank today and you withdraw your euros or dollars from your bank and you put it into your wallet, that is withdrawing money outside of the custodian. But as long as the money or the currency is with the custodian, it's basically uh, a third party that you have to trust. And with Bitcoin, it's the same concept. So if you have your Bitcoin with any custodian, uh, any exchange, it is the same principle. So your Bitcoin is not yours. You are owed that Bitcoin. And therefore, you have to trust the exchange and that the exchange will not go bust and so on and so forth. So it's a similar thing like a bank account, but for Bitcoin. Um which requires something called KYC. So KYC is basically uh, the term that banks use and uh, banks implement in order to verify customers. They are, they are they're actually required to do that. So uh, they will ask you all sorts of questions. Where are your funds coming from? What's your nationality, first name, last name, age, and so on and so forth. So this is part of every account opening, just like it is with any custodian that you would like to buy Bitcoin from. Um, so it requires every custodian uh, account with any exchange requires you to 
um, expose your personal information, unfortunately, uh, because you want to exchange fiat or euros or dollars with uh, Bitcoin. And because there is uh, national currencies involved in the transaction, they are required to request these information. So custodial uh, exchange accounts are subject to KYC information and of course that also means that they hold your keys but that's the same as uh, the example I just gave you about the bank account so if they hold your keys that means that you do not control those coins you have to request the custodian to send you the coins uh, and it's not in your hands whether the custodian will send you those coins or not. For whatever reason, they can decide anytime that they don't want to send you those coins. Um, so when it comes to the benefits and trade-offs of a custodian, uh, obviously, if you are a person who is not technically very savvy or who is new into Bitcoin, using a custodian account in the first place is a really good thing because you're not familiar yet with a private wallet. You don't know how a wallet works. So as the first step, it is very beneficial because you have re less responsibility to manage the wallet. And... Um, you can learn first how a private wallet works and you can learn that from this course as well before you actually start to use it. Uh, so using a custodian wallet as the first step is a really, really good thing. And uh, of course, you also have additional services like you can lend out your Bitcoin, you can uh, borrow fiat against your Bitcoin if you have your Bitcoin with any exchange and of course you have a customer support service if you have a customer support service and you for example forget your password you can contact them they're gonna they're gonna verify your identity and they're gonna reset your password that's something feasible just like it is with any bank and you can instantly of course buy or sell uh, fiat with your Bitcoin. If you hold your Bitcoin with any exchange, obviously converting it into any fiat currency or national currency is instant and easy. These are the benefits. Now, the trade-offs. The trade-offs of that is that, of course, it is way less secure. Why? Because exchanges hold a lot of coins for a lot of people. And hackers love exchanges. Why? Because they, if they manage to hack an exchange, they are going to be able to get way more coins than they would if they hack any individual wallet. So holding your coins with an exchange has this risk of being way less secure because it is a point of attack for hackers. And of course, in most cases, there is absolutely no insurance if they default. So even if they don't get hacked, if, they, if the exchange or the custodian has financial issues, if they default or if they go bankrupt, your coins are gone and you cannot do anything about it. And this is nothing that has never happened in the history of Bitcoin. Mt. Dox went bust, um, uh, I think, eight years ago and every beneficiary lost all their Bitcoin. So um, that's another trade-off. And of course, as I already mentioned, there is the possibility of being censored. If you, for example, live in a, um, let's say, country that has a very oppressive government and you disagree with your government, just like it happened a few uh, months ago in Canada, even a first world country, this can happen. If someone disagrees with you, they can censor your transactions. They can seize your accounts. And uh, of course, if you are holding your funds with a custodian, if the custodian gets law enforcement's 
instructions that they have to seize your account, they will do it because they have to follow the law, right? So that's another risk that you need to consider. And of course, you're subject to KYC. I already explained what KYC stands for. Um, you have to dis uh, display your details. Uh, the exchange knows how much Bitcoin you have uh, and they have all your personal details and so on and so forth. And as I mentioned, you don't own the coins. You do not control the coins. So choosing a custodian or an exchange um, can be sometimes a little bit challenging, but there is a number of things that you can look at before choosing a place where you want to buy and hold your Bitcoin. Uh, and on the right side of this, um, of this um, graph, I have uh, put some options that you can consider when doing your due diligence. So I'm not gonna go through each one of them, but obviously it depends where you're based. The, the, the topics or the points that you wanna look at depends where you are exactly based. If you need more support about this on where to buy your Bitcoin, get in touch with us, we offer uh, consult consultation services for individuals and even corporates who would like to know where to safely get exposure to Bitcoin. So if you are interested, just get in touch with us. We can help you based on your circumstances, your jurisdiction, wherever you are and so on and so forth. But these points that I have put here can be definitely helpful when making your decision. But one point that I will say is universal for sure is the option to withdraw your Bitcoin. Because no matter where you are, if you buy your Bitcoin at an exchange and you have not the option to withdraw your Bitcoin, that means that your Bitcoin is locked. You actually don't own it and you can never get access to it when you want to. So pay attention, there is... Uh, a number of places, there's a lot of scams out there that don't grant you access. Uh, but there is also non-scam places where you can buy Bitcoin, but still I would never ever buy my Bitcoin there because you cannot withdraw your Bitcoin. For example, uh, Revolut is a bank in Europe and you can buy Bitcoin with them, but you cannot withdraw your Bitcoin, at least for now. So maybe they will change that in the near future but that's the, that's the current state. So uh, don't buy your Bitcoin at a place where you're not sure that you can really withdraw your Bitcoin to your private wallet. Uh, this is a list of a few places that you can take a look depending on where you are. Obviously Strike is a very low fee or actually no fee place to buy Bitcoin, but it requires you to be in the US or in El Salvador. Swamp Bitcoin obviously is a great place in the US. Kraken is pretty much international, but just be really careful because they have a lot of scammy coins listed, unfortunately. Um, Gemini, Crypto.com is international as well. Uh, not my favorite place, to be honest. Very scammy place, extremely scammy place, but you can get Bitcoin there. Bought and withdrawed, that's a good thing, but er everything else is really be cautious. Um, Binance, Pocket Bitcoin is a Bitcoin only company in Europe, great place. Get Bitter is also a great place. Bull Bitcoin for our Canadian friends, Coin Corner for our uh, British friends, and Bitcoin Reserve, I believe, is um, also European, but uh, you. I think they're very specialized for institutional uh, purchases, for larger purchases. <coughs> and it's also uh, Bitcoin only, so. Okay, so next point is about the risks. So there are third-party risks that you need to consider. A few of them I've already mentioned, but I'm offering here direct counter measures that uh, you can basically use in order to 
reduce them at least. So if you have your Bitcoin at an exchange and for some reason you cannot uh, run your own wallet for whatever reason. I mean, running a wallet today is very, very easy, but let's say you are disabled or you're not very tech savvy, you're not tech savvy at all and you really, really struggle to uh, learn how to use a Bitcoin wallet. Uh, you can still use a custodian, but just be careful because custodials are honeypots for hackers. Use two-factor authentication applications. Very, very important. Don't get fished because sometimes these hackers are very, very smart and sophisticated in getting you uh, release your password or um, get your password basically guessed and withdraw your Bitcoin. Every exchange that I am aware of offers two-factor authentication methods. So, um, and I and I don't recommend using a two-factor authentication method with an SMS functionality because uh, you can be swim swapped basically. So don't use uh, that method, but there is other types of uh, two-factor authentication methods. Uh, for example, you can use a Google Authenticator, which is uh, a Google application where you can basically um, have the application generate a new code or a new uh, two-factor code for you every 30 seconds. So it's a way, way more safe place to use a custodian uh, service. And of course, you're subject to regulatory frameworks. Uh, and if you want to completely eliminate that subjectivity to regulatory frameworks, which can obviously change quite quickly based on the jurisdiction where you're in. Uh, as I said, Canada was a perfect example recently. Use a private wallet. Stick around this course. Learn how to use a private wallet. That's the best way to store your Bitcoin. And um, just learn to do it. Do it. Don't expose yourself to the risk of being censored or uh, having your Bitcoin hacked with a custodian. Use a private wallet. And even if you use a private wallet and you want to, for example, some people want to keep some of their Bitcoin on an exchange because, for example, let's say you live on your Bitcoin and you want to be able to quickly, you know, uh, exchange Bitcoin to fiat or for example you want to take a loan uh, from your Bitcoin as a collateral you want to use your Bitcoin as a collateral and you need to use a custodial service in that scenario you can do that but I would personally not recommend putting more than 10% of your Bitcoin on an exchange so um, yeah so don't Put more than 10% if you want to do any of this. And in an ideal scenario, you don't want to have any of your Bitcoin on any exchange. <clears throat> so no control over the coins. That's clear. Withdraw it to your private wallet. So you have control over it. And rehypofication, bank run. That's the last point. Uh, when it comes to rehypofication, we have actually recorded a podcast episode on BitGuide. Just go and check on our website, our podcast, and we have actually a very, very great episode about this topic uh, because uh, it is a very important topic to consider. You basically, just to short, uh, shortly explain this, basically when you put your Bitcoin with a custodian, since it's just a number on the screen when you use the custodian, the custodian could lend that Bitcoin out to someone else and still show you that number. And uh, that's pretty much rehypothecating your Bitcoin. And if the custodian does that many, many times, then it becomes nothing than the same system like we have with our current banking system and if a lot of people all of a sudden want their Bitcoin uh, with, uh, withdrawn to their own wallet 
and you are not one of the first people who does that, there's going to be a so-called bank run. And if there is a bank run, you will be the one who doesn't get his Bitcoin because there is no Bitcoin left. And in that scenario, the third party would go bust and you lose all your Bitcoin. Yeah, so this is pretty much it. 